Buddy, the uh, former health insurance executive, the president of the Center for Health and Democracy, uh, the president of Business Leaders for Healthcare Transformation, the founder of Tarbell.org, T-A-R-B-E-L-L.org, uh, and the author of uh, two brilliant books, Deadly Spin and Nation on the Take, uh, Wendell Potter. And uh, his uh, Twitter handle, by the way, is Wendell Potter, at Wendell Potter, or uh, the website blhct.org. Uh, that's Business Leaders for Healthcare Transformation.org. Uh, Wendell, welcome back to the program. Tell me about you, this uh, new piece uh, that you wrote about death and debt by deductibles. What, what's your old industry up to now? Well, up to no good, of course. And it was one of the reasons I left my job at Cigna in the first place. By the way, you're right. Uh, John Warner was one of Elizabeth Taylor's uh, husbands. So <laughs> just yeah. to make sure I know that. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, in fact, I met her in Washington when I was a reporter many, many years ago during that brief period that she was John Warner's wife. Oh, that must have been but an anyhow, interesting experience. It was indeed. I, yeah, a lot of folks don't know I was a, a reporter. I was a Capitol Hill reporter for some time. Mm. But anyhow, I had a longer career in the health insurance business, and uh, toward the end of that career, uh, it was an industry-wide strategy of moving every last one of us as, as rapidly as possible into high-deductible plans. And um, it's, it's clear why that benefits health insurers, because the more people have to pay out of their own pockets, the less they have to pay in claims. Right. And it's one of the big reasons why they've been posting record profits for years now, uh, even after the Affordable Care Act was passed. In fact, the Affordable Care Act, um, Congress just wasn't uh, keeping an eye on the ball to find out, to figure out what insurance companies would do to uh, keep screwing people. And they absolutely are. Yeah. So uh, let's let's define terms here. Uh, where did you know high deductible? Where were deductibles 10, 15, 20 years ago? I mean, what's, what what is the arc, and where are they now? What 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 has this arc of deductibles been like? I've I, I've I, I, uh, perhaps it was your piece uh, read that this is one of the things that has really been chipping away at the uh, you know roughly 50 or 60 percent of Americans who just. Have uh, you know struggle to deal with even a, a four hundred to a thousand dollar you know one time expense in the course of a year? Uh, what what has that? How has that worked out? Well, it's it's worked out to the detriment of people who are uh, low to moderate income, people of color, uh, people who have uh, chronic health conditions in particular, people who are uh, accident prone or just happen to have an accident. Uh, they're all penalized because of this. Most folks, I guess, can't remember that. It hasn't been all that long ago till, you know, when uh, these were uncommon, these high deductible plans. I joined the industry uh, when we still had a lot of HMOs that had uh, relatively modest co-payments. You would pay maybe at the most uh, 25 bucks to go see a doctor, usually a lot less than that, and 10 bucks to pick up a prescription. Uh, insurers decided they could make a lot, of, a lot more money by abandoning, abandoning those plans and putting us into high deductible plans. And just a few years ago, just 10 years ago, deductibles were less than half of what they are now. And the Affordable Care Act, when it was passed, uh, Congress uh, uh, set an upper limit on how much people would have to pay in deductibles. But the limit is far, far too high. What uh, is that limit? Now, it's, it's, it's over $7,000 for an individual and over 14000 uh, for a family, we'd be getting over fifteen thousand. That'll that'll now. that would probably wipe out seventy percent of Americans. Oh, it absolutely would. I was just talking to a, a Wall Street Journal reporter this past week about this issue, and she said that she uh, and I'm sure a lot of reporters at the Journal are in union negotiated health plans, and she's got a, a thirteen thousand dollar family deductible. So they're very common, uh -huh. and you're exactly right for people who don't have uh, $13,000 in the bank, it can absolutely wipe you out. And most families don't have that much money. Uh, about, uh, I think, 40%, if not more, of Americans only have about $400 in the bank. Right. So you can see what's happening. And it's a, it's a big reason why people turn to GoFundMe or bankruptcy court, even with health insurance, when they get sick and have to get care. Are there any statistics? We're talking with Wendell Potter, former insurance industry executive, uh, et cetera. Are there any uh, statistics on what 
what percentage of people who end up in bankruptcy because somebody got sick um, were insured versus weren't insured? I haven't seen that particular uh, number. Uh, it would be very high. And mm-hmm. uh, to be honest with you, one of the reasons I said earlier that I left my job was because of these. But I uh, went to see an outdoor, you know, uh, just a witness, an outdoor clinic near where I grew up in Tennessee several years ago. And I found out from those organizers that a lot of people who were there getting charity care uh, said they were told by their insurance companies if they couldn't meet their deductibles, see if remote area medical might be having a, a, one of these health fairs where, where they where they live. Wow. Uh, so that's why people drive hundreds and hundreds of miles away to these clinics in many cases. They Even have when they have insurance. What can we do about Even this, Wendell can- Potter? Well, I'm going to be starting a coalition of organizations uh, in the not-too-distant future that will shine a light on this and put pressure on Congress and state legislators to do something about this. It's completely out of hand, and and the insurance companies are uh, the happiest clans, uh, and their shareholders are. But we've got to make sure the Biden administration is paying attention to this. The the president keeps talking about uh, uh, how much we've expanded coverage under the Affordable Care Act. Uh, but uh, 40% of people, this is according to the Commonwealth Fund, 40% of people who get their coverage through Obamacare uh, exchanges, these ACA exchanges in the states, are underinsured. That means their deductibles are so high, they're not picking up their prescriptions. They're not going to the doctor when right. they need to. Um, and employers are beginning to wake up uh, uh, to this as well, too. I'm also going to be organizing an employer conference as part of business leaders for healthcare transformation this fall. So we got to get employers to pay attention to this and be vocal about it, put pressure on Congress and the White House to do something about it. Yeah. It seems to me that the big mistake we made, or at least that the Obama administration made, was expecting or believing that the insurance industry would negotiate in good faith and would behave uh, well, you know, once they were given this multi-trillion dollar gift, ultimately. Yeah. You're exactly right. I mean, I, I heard uh, then-President Obama and candidate Obama before he was elected say that we needed a public option to keep insurance companies honest. Right. I'm not necessarily sure that would would have done the trick, uh, but it might have done something. It would have helped. In the absence of, yeah, it would have helped. And uh, not only do we not did we not get a public option, uh, insurers have just uh, had almost free reign to do what they want to do in terms of making it more difficult for people to get coverage, to get care that they need even with insurance and high deductibles is a big big reason why yeah there you go uh the uh president of business leaders for Healthcare transformation wendell potter former health insurance executive uh author of deadly spin nation and nation on the take blhct.org is the website uh twitter handle at wendell potter wendell thanks for dropping by it's always great talking with you thank you tom